Okay, guys, it's time for Discord makes my game number four, horror edition. Send me your ideas. Just no spiders, please. Send. Hmm. I really hope I get some submissions. Huh? A Discord notification. Once again, I asked my Discord for game ideas. In this series, I have to combine as many great ideas as I can into one game. The floodgates were opened, I swear there was like a hundred messages. And while I wish I could add everything, I had to pick the ideas that would combine into the most fun horror minigame. And of course, as with all my horror games, my wife is going to be the one to test it. Because, I mean, that's just more fun for all of us. Oh! But first, hi. Welcome to my channel where I create multiple new games every month. It's a tiny channel with only, wait a second, 8,000 subscribers? <laughs> I guess you guys really like Project Zomboid. You guys also decimated the 1k light goal, and I promised I would not rest until the updates are done, so don't worry, Build 2 is well underway. For anyone else, consider subscribing, or become a member for exclusive perks like early access to new games and videos. Okay, so the first game suggestion came from Dark Games. He said, Lantern as light source, like in the nun. Immediately I found this image which honestly became the inspiration for the entire game. After I quickly set up some simple first person movement, I actually started by modeling an arm and a lamp. I brought this into Unity and set it up in front of the camera so it looked like you were holding the lamp to see. It looked alright, but it was just so unnatural seeing your arm move like that. I don't know if you're aware, but you don't actually walk around with your arm parented to the look rotation of your eyes. <laughs> In the real world, your arm has some connectivity issues. It, it tends to lag a bit while you're turning around. At first, I just tried making the arm only follow your Y rotation. It definitely looked more natural than following your every camera move, but then I added quaternion.slurp. Quaternion slurp. And this gives the arm those real life connectivity issues. I wanted the lamp to sway as you move, so it actually felt like it was interacting with the world. With Unity's joint components and a rigid body to simulate the physics, I made the lamp swivel on its hinges like it would in real life. The lamp physics were looking perfect and- Bruh. Uh, just don't look at that. Like I said, they were looking perfect, and I kept tweaking them in the background to get them looking as- Um... What is that? I didn't make that. Is this just some massive light over there? Am I getting pranked? I mean, is this, is this a glitch? What? There's a bridge? Dude, what is going on? Actually, this is, this is kind of creepy. I didn't make this. I mean, I guess we should check it out. I already can't see the platform. How long is this thing? What? It's so intense. The light is like, it's so intense. Like, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant light. I don't know, man. What? I mean, one could say this is a brilliant light over here. This It's so intense. I mean, what? <laughs> What could this possibly be? Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> nice. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant is built for anyone, no matter where you are in your learning journey. If you're like me, you never really enjoyed or learned that much in an ancient classroom setting. But that's why Brilliant lessons are filled with hands-on problem solving that lets you play with the concept. This method is actually proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. In my opinion, this style really is the future of learning. The interactivity Brilliant has to offer means you won't just be mindlessly memorizing new facts. You're going to learn how to be a better thinker. Like many other jobs out there, being a good developer means being a lifelong learner and brilliant helps you build real knowledge with just minutes out of your day if you're at all interested in learning the code you've got to start with brilliant's courses on python you'll literally start building programs on day one with a built-in drag and drop editor or maybe you're like me and you're looking to supplement your coding knowledge by deepening your math skills you can start all the way down with the simplest algebra basics and end with experiencing calculus and trigonometry to try everything brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days visit brilliant.org slash hayden john or click the link in the description. You'll even get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring, and now back to the video. Okay, the next suggestion came from a low 622, and he said, add spiders. Come on, bro. So again, I actually started with the model this time. I honestly thought the grossest thing would just be a plain black spider, like Black Widows. In Unity, I made the eyes glow, so even when you can't see the spider, you know exactly where they are, and you know they're watching. The second part of Elope's suggestion was that spiders attack and chase you when you're not looking at them, or when you're in a dark area. And I said, ooh, like weeping angels? And he said, yes, sir. So I made the spider move when you're not looking at it. Uh... <laughs> Nani? Okay, so I got it working and uh, it was obvious that I had made a terrible mistake. Oh my gosh, that's so creepy. 
Bro, what? That's so bad. The spider movement, I knew I had to allow the spiders to traverse the walls. I mean, if it just walks around on the ground, is it even a spider? That caused so many challenges. <laughs> For my first attempt, I tried shooting rays in multiple directions to detect the walls and where the spider is on the wall. And I kind of got it working, but it was so clunky because the spider could only move straight up and down. This was just not going to give the spider vibe I wanted. To fix this, I tried projecting the move direction onto the wall itself. This seemed like a good solution, but it wasn't enough. The spider had no way to continue over and down the other side. After four hours of coding, I surrendered. Honestly, this is stupid. I don't even like coding. And I hate video games. I don't ever want to make a game again. I'm just going to sell everything I own and move to Alaska. Oh, wait, I have an idea. Instead of using all these rays, I'll just use one. It'll look straight in front, and if there's a wall in the way, the spider will enter scaling mode. Once the top is reached, we'll enter walk mode again, and if there's nothing underneath, the spider will go down. Um, okay, but the spider still needs to be able to cross sideways. Okay, so I'll project the player's location on the wall, but this time I'll manually edit the location so that it's always at a higher Y. And I'll do the opposite when climbing down. Uh, okay, but the spider's legs still aren't moving. It looks really- Hey, you need to shut up, actually. You're always complaining and getting me down. It's not helping. It's, it's not cool. Stop. Whatever. Okay, but actually Sassy Hayden was right. It was time to animate the spider. At first, my plan was to manually animate it like I've always done, but I decided to check out a procedural animation tutorial, and to my surprise, it didn't actually look that hard at all. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go watch the tutorial one more time. Once I found out how to rig the spider, the rest was not that bad. Basically, the spider's legs move towards their individual targets. Then all you have to do is move those targets and the legs will follow. So I made some targeters that float above the spider and shoot a ray down to get the new step location. I had to tweak a lot of settings, but before long... Oh, this is so bad. Bro, this is disgusting. Oh! The next suggestion came from Chris, and he said, a sanity system. Obviously, you can replenish it, by the way. I decided to use the lights for this. Inspired by Don't Starve, I made the spiders afraid of the light, so you can actually chase them away now. But the problem is the light drains. But you can replenish it with these light balls. I'm running out of ideas, okay? What can I say? If you run out of your light, well... So the next suggestion came from Riptide, and he said, You're in a maze with a really hairy spider, but like, human hair- uh, No! Okay, Riptide, no! No more hair! We all remember how that turned out last time. But the maze was a sick idea, so I set up some random maze generation. To do this, I had to use a coding technique called recursion. If you don't know what recursion is, it's basically a function that calls itself, which calls itself, which calls itself, and as you can already tell, this is very prone to accidental infinite loops, which are not a very good thing for your computer. Oh no. No, no, no please. Oh no, no! Okay, so round two, and I got it working. The recursive function randomly steps through the grid until every cell is connected. The game was really coming together, and I was actually getting so excited to play this. I made spider spawners at each corner of the maze, and I made light replenish balls randomly spawn around the maze so they can get really hard to find. I gave the player health, and I wanted to try to scare my wife with a jump scare, so I created this spider jump animation when you die. And after that, all I had to do was add menus and sound, but it was finally time. Before my wife plays, think about joining the Discord. We have an amazing community of devs or just gamers that like to play the games. And you could be a part of the next Discord Makes My Game episode. Alright, well here's the gameplay. Uh, I, my, the my hands are sweating already. <laughs> do I get to know anything before? Uh, oh, I mean, okay, so your light is going out and you have to run around and find light balls to replenish it. Okay. That's it. Can you the whole game actually? Okay, can you sprint? Nope. Maybe we should make it darker. What happens Spooky. if you run out of light? You, then you're just out of light and you're you're just gonna die probably. So how do I win? You just want to survive as long as you can. You're gonna die. Oh, die. so there's no like out. I mean, yeah. If you you can find the end of the maze and get out. Really? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Play. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> this is terrifying. So are those my footsteps? Do the spiders make sounds? <gasps> Yay! Wait, that was a cute sound effect. Oh! Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh-uh! Um. 
Get out of here. <laughs> Get out of here. <sighs> oh no. Oh! Yeah, get out of here. Uh-uh. 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 I need more light. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, sick. Dang, what? <laughs> what? Let's go. I've never got that many <laughs> Really? Oh, gosh. Ew. Oh, what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Ew. I don't know which way I win. No! <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Okay. Did I go this way? Oh. Okay. Ew! Dang, you're doing good. Thank you. Uh, really good. It's the sweaty hands. Um, oh. <laughs> I'm so scared right now. Ew! <laughs> Why is the music so intense? Why was that so intense, Hayden? Oh gosh! Okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. What the heck? I feel like I just did a zigzag. Hey guys! Hey! What? Wait. Did I miss a turn? No, my light's going out. Wait, I came that way, right? Oh no. Hey guys! Ew! Oh, what? Um, I can't see. Oh! <laughs> it actually kind of got you. Wait, what happened there? <sighs> Except there wasn't actually a way out. You lied to me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I hope that's good enough content. Please edit out my yeah, burp. Was, 